All right, today we're going to talk about another topic in social psychology. Can someone please tell me what social psychology is? Your own words. Joe, go ahead. It's kind of like how your own ideas kind of influenced by other people. I'll go along with that. The way you act, the way you think is influenced by other people. We've all year talked about percentages. Give me some percentages. What percentage of your behavior do you think is affected by the influence of others? I won't ask you for anything else other than that. What percentage? Natalie, go ahead. I'm going to say pretty high, like 85%. 85 percent. 85%? I won't ask you why. At least not yet. Evan? I'm going to say 70. 70 percent? Okay. Anybody else? Do we all agree that it's in that range? Is there anybody who thinks that Natalie and Evan are way too high? Even too low. So everybody says that over half of your behavior is affected by others. Okay. What I'd like for you to do next, if you would please, is within your groups discuss and answer these two questions. Discuss and answer these two questions. Why do people act that way? Who and how do they act? I don't know. I just want you to answer that question. And how accurate are first impressions? Among yourselves, answer those those two questions. general idea of your answers to those two questions. General idea. I need you to watch this film clip, if you would, please. It's a film clip that may be familiar to some of you. I'm not going to give you much background. And then, in the context of this film clip, we're going to answer those questions. Young lady's name is Elizabeth Lambert. Maybe some of you heard the story about her and heard some of the things that she was involved in. She's a, obviously a soccer player for the University of New Mexico, and that, those were her actions in one game. I don't know soccer very well, but how she got that far in that game, I'm not sure of. She was suspended for several games for her actions. Now, do any of you personally know Elizabeth Lambert? Give me your first impressions of her based on what you saw on those clips. What do you think, Evan? Very violent. A violent person, absolutely. A competitor with anger issues. A competitor <laughs> with anger issues. Kayla? Think she really doesn't care what happens to the other person and she wants the ball. Like, she's going to do whatever she yeah. has to do to get the ball. Go along with that. Anybody else? Somebody I don't want to be friends with. Somebody you don't want to be around. Anybody else? If you read about Elizabeth Lambert, most people say who know her well that what you saw in that clip is not her off the field. She has had some issues on the field before that. But that was not her. That's not who she is. But based on first impressions, Gabby said not someone she wants to be friends with because of the first impression that was created. Okay? 
why do you think she acted that way? None of us personally know her. Have any of you even read about her? Okay, so a couple of you have, but most of you have not. Why do you think she acted that way? You're at that game. How would you answer that question? If someone said, why did Elizabeth Lambert act like she did? My personal favorite was the pony table. <laughs> Kayla, go ahead. Um, the fact that she just really wanted the ball. So she's super competitive. Yeah. Okay, go along with that. Joe. I think it's a mixture of competitiveness and anger management. So she just can't manage her anger very well, and so she takes that anger to the field with her. Yeah. Got it. Natalie, go ahead. There could be something going on outside of soccer that is affecting her life, so some kind of external stress. An external stress. Any examples, and not just Natalie, but anyone, what kind of examples of external stress could cause her to behave in that way? Fight with a friend. Fight with a friend. Anything else? Yeah, maybe she has a big test or something coming up in college. A big test, and she can't handle the stress. Joe, what else? Her dog example died. of attribution. You attributed her behavior to certain things. Maybe she's very competitive and has anger issues. Maybe there was stress for outside of, outside life. Maybe she's just that super competitive. A lot of you attributed it to competitiveness. Now imagine if you saw someone do that out on the street. Walking down the street, you see someone grab hold of someone, pull them down to the ground. What would you attribute it to them? Psychotic? Mental illness? Were those actions criminal? That wasn't real life? Outside of the lines, it could be. Would you get arrested for doing that to someone? I think the people that she did that to could start dismissing They could? Okay. Well, let's, let's move on and, and write down a few things as we talk about, first of all, impression formation. How do you create those impressions? And then we'll talk a little bit about attributing behavior. Why do we have this need as human beings to put things into categories? We like to categorize people. For instance, let's go back to Elizabeth Lambert. What do we know about her? What do we know based on what we've heard and what we've seen in these few minutes? What do we know, Lydia? Um, we know that when she's on the field, she's angry. At least she was that day, and we're assuming that that probably has happened more than once. I'm with you. Okay. What else do we know about that? She's a soccer player. She's a soccer player. Thank you. Fundamental things. We know she's a soccer player. We know she is a female. What else? That kind of behavior is accepted by teammates and coaches. At least to a certain extent, until she crossed whatever line it was, that behavior was accepted, right, by certain people. Now, we need to categorize people, and we have this need to categorize people simply because of what you see in the second bullet. It allows us to make inferences of others, right? We have the ability then to say, as a soccer player, <clears throat> she's able to do this, this, and this. As a student in a classroom, when someone says something that she doesn't like, she can't hold them in the face. But as a soccer, soccer player, we have a certain schema that allows us to make inferences, and then we can interpret and remember information based on that context. Does that make sense to everybody? In terms of, okay, athlete did this. When we remember her behavior, we'll remember it in the context of athletics. Would it be different if she were a he? <coughs> if instead of Elizabeth Lambert, she was Ed Lambert? Would the world look at it differently? Because Elizabeth Lambert got absolutely positively ripped apart in the press. What do you think, Nick? Well, um, it's I think they get away a little more because they like testosterone and stuff like that. The guys are naturally aggressive. Natural aggression in men. Boys will be boys. Okay. Yeah, I would agree with that because girls are supposed to you know, like play nice and not be so rough. And like when a girl like that does that, it's like, whoa, you're not a girl. What are you doing? Okay. It's not, it doesn't fit our schema for a female athlete as much as it would for a male athlete in some ways, which is totally unfair, but relatively accurate, maybe? Go ahead, Kayla. Um, I guess I kind of think that if it was like a guy, I think, like as far as soccer goes, they would end up getting them back. So, I don't know, it wouldn't be all on one person, it would be more the whole group of 
Okay, eventually it would end up being with, with males more of a group situation. There would have been retribution in your opinion? Okay, more likely with males than females? Maybe so. The primacy effect. This is one we don't even have to write down the definition for because we know what it is. When it comes to forming impressions of people, what is primacy? It's on your AP exam, so we'll be all over this one. We're more likely to remember things that happen first or last. So that's why you don't get a second chance to, all together now, make a first impression. And we remember the things that happen when we first meet someone, and we're more likely to remember the things that happen in our most recent interaction with them. So when it comes to, all right, the word that's been used a lot is attribution. To what do we attribute people's behavior? And you see here that the attribution theory addresses the question of how people make their judgments and it emphasizes the causes of behavior. Most people make an error in terms of attributing behavior to internal rather than external forces. It's called the fundamental attribution error. error. What we usually do is, if I make a mistake or I behave in a way that you consider to be improper, your first judgment will be that it's a personal flaw of mine, not that there's some outside force. So it's short, kind of nasty. Is it possible that that could be attributed to it being your last two days of school? Of course, of course. Is that absolutely always the reason, or would it be the reason why you act a certain way for sure? No. So let's return to our film clip. Please repeat some of the things that you attributed her behavior to. I know you already did it, but do it again. What did you attribute it to? Losing. Losing. Competitiveness. What's that? The sport itself. The sport itself, the nature of the sport? External stress. External stress. Maybe she never plays that way. Maybe she failed an exam. Maybe she got into a fight with a friend. Maybe her car wouldn't start that day. Maybe she was just that angry. But we attribute her behavior to other things before we get to external stress. Because one of the things that's really important is, is that when we use three criteria to judge behavior, distinctiveness. Is that behavior distinctive? Does it stick out? Okay? Is it consistent? Does a certain person act a certain way all the time? And when it comes to consensus, does anybody know what consensus means? Consensus means general agreement. So how would that apply to attribution? Pick on me. I act a certain way. And when you attribute that behavior to some outside force, what would make you think that you'd be more likely to be right? Mr. Bowen was a jerk today. You're talking to one another. Go ahead, Shelby. Other people agree with you. Lydia says, yeah, yes, yeah, Shelby, he was. Well, he must. this must have happened, that must have happened. Something else must have happened. And then if you all join together, you're going to attribute my behavior to whatever you agree generally is the main thing that caused the behavior, okay? So let's review. We know what social psychology is. We've talked about impression formation, which has a lot to do with primacy. What else, what else affects um, impression formation? Primacy is one thing. What else does? Stereotyping does. And self-fulfilling prophecy. Then attribution is the theory that addresses the question of how we judge the causes of behavior. Is the behavior distinct? Is it easily seen? Is the behavior consistent? And do other people around you who observe the behavior agree with your idea of what caused it? If you understand those things, then you've gone a long way toward understanding the effect that the effect that the way that we look at other people's behavior determines the way that we're going to act toward them. Any questions?